so hi everyone today we are going to have cam 16 test 3 reading passage 2 so it's from cambridge 16 Test 3, Reading Passage 2. The topic is Climate Change Reveals Ancient Artifacts in Norway's Glaciers. Well, above the tree line in Norway's highest mountains, ancient fields of ice are shrinking as Earth's climate warms. As the ice has vanished, it has been giving up the treasures it has preserved in cold storage, for the last 6,000 years, items such as ancient arrows and skis from Viking Age traders and those artifacts have provided archaeologists with some surprising insights into how ancient Norwegians made their living. Organic materials like textiles and hides are relatively rare finds at archaeological sites. This is because unless they are protected from the microorganisms, they cause decay. They tend not to long last long. Not to last long. Extreme cold is one reliable way to keep artifacts relatively fresh for a few thousand years. But once thawed out, these materials experience degradation relatively swiftly. With climate change shrinking, ice cover around the world, glacial archaeologists need to raise the clock to find newly revealed artifacts, preserve them and study them. If something fragile drives and is wind blown, it might very soon be lost to science or an arrow might be exposed and then covered again by the next snow and remain well preserved. The unpredictability means that glacial archaeologists have to be systematic in their approach to field work. Over a nine-year period, a team of archaeologists which included Lars Pilo of Opland Country Council, Norway, and James Barrett of the MacDonald Institute for Archaeological Research, surveyed patch, patches of ice in Opland, an area of south-central Norway that is home to some of the country's highest mountains. Reindeer once congregated on these icy patches in the late summer months to escape biting insects and from the late stone age, hunters followed. In addition, trade routes threaded through the mountain passes of Oakland, linking settlements in Norway to the rest of Europe. The slow but steady movement of glaciers tend to destroy anything at their bases. So the team focused on stationary patches of ice mostly about 1,400 meters. That ice is found amid fields of frost, weathered boulders, fallen rocks, and exposed bedrock that for nine months of the year is buried beneath snow. Field work is hard work. Hiking with all our equipment, often camping on permafrost, but very rewarding. You are rescuing the archaeology, bringing the melting ice to wider attention, discovering a unique environmental history, and really connecting with the natural environment, says Barrett. At the edges of the contracting ice patches, archaeologists found more than 2,000 artifacts which form the material record that ran from 4,000 BCE to the beginnings of Renaissance in the 14th century. Many of the artifacts are associated with hunting. Hunters would have easily misplaced arrows and they often discarded broken bows rather than take them all the way home. Other items could have been used by hunters traversing the high mountain passes of Oakland, all-purpose items like tools, skis, and horse truck. Barrett's team radiocarbon dated 153 of the artifacts and compared those dates to the timing of major environmental changes in the region, such as periods of cooling or warming, and major social and economic shift, such as growth of warm farming settlement, and the spread of international trade networks leading up to the Viking Age. 
they found that some periods had produced lot of artifacts which indicates that people had been pretty active in the mountains during those times but there were few or no signs of activity during other periods what was surprising according to barrett was the timing of these periods Oplands mountains present daunting terrain and in periods of extreme cold glaciers could block the higher mountain passes and make travel in the upper reaches of the mountains extremely difficult archaeologists assumed people would stick to lower elevations during a time like the late antic little ice age a short period of deeper than usual cold from about 536 to 600 century but it turned out that hunters kept regularly venturing into the mountains even when the climate turned cold based on the amount of stuff they had apparently dropped there remarkably though the finds from the ice may have continued through this period perhaps suggesting that the importance of mountain hunting increased to supplement failing agricultural harvest in times of low temperature says barrett a colder turn in the scandinavian climate would likely have meant widespread crop failure so more people would have depended on hunting to make up for those losses many of the artifacts barrett's team recovered date from the beginning of the viking age the 700s through to the 900th century trade networks connecting scandinavia with europe and middle east were expanding around this time Although we usually think of ships when we think of Scandinavian expansion, these recent discoveries shows that plenty of goods traveled on overland routes like the mountain passes of Oppland, and growing Norwegian towns along with export markets would have created a booming demand for hides to fight off the cold, as well as antlers to make useful things like combs. Business must have been good for hunters. Norway's mountains are probably still hiding a lot of history and prehistory in remote ice patches. When Barrett Stream looked at the dates for their sample of 153 artifacts, they noticed a gap with almost no artifacts from about 3,800 to 2,200 BC. In fact, archaeological finds from the period are rare all over Norway. the researchers say that could be uh, because many of those artifacts have already disintegrated or are still frozen in the ice that means archaeologists could be extracting some of those artifacts from retreating ice in years to come so with this i go to the question from 14 to 19 so i have to match the information to the statement yes an explanation of uh explanation for weapons being left behind in the mountains so weapons are left behind the mountains with this keyword i go to the passage so see this hunters would have easily misplaced arrows and often discarded broken bows rather than take them all the way home so what happens is the hunters traversing high mountain passes all purpose items like tools kits and horse track have been placed there you understand they easily misplace the arrows and often discard it as broken up bows so this is the suitable answer for the question 14 so the answer is d a reference to the physical difficulties involved in an archaeological expedition so physical difficulties is my keyword so see this field work is a hard work hiking with all our equipment after camping on permafrost but very rewarding so you are asking the archaeology bringing the melting ice to wider attention discovering a unique environmental history and really connecting with the natural environment says barrett so yeah i go with paragraph c 
explanation why less food may have been available. Explanation for why less food has been available. So see this. A colder turn in Scandinavian climate would likely have meant widespread crop failures. So more people have to depend on hunting to make up those losses. Hence the paragraph is F. Crop failure indicates that there is less food available. So this is a keyword and a reference to the possibility of future archaeological discoveries. So it's all about discoveries in possibility of future archaeological discoveries. So see this, still hiding a lot of history and prehistory. When Barrett's team looked at uh, dates, their sample of 153 artifacts, uh, they noticed a gap with almost no artifacts. So, extracting some of those artifacts from retreating uh, years, eyes in years to come. So, something that led to the discovery, 17th one is H. Examples of items that would have been traded. Again, traded is my keyword. So see this trade networks connecting Scandinavia with Europe, Middle East were expanding around this time. That shows it's uh, something related to trade and trade routes. So I hope with option G. A reference to the pressure archaeologists are under to work quickly. So see this organic materials like textiles, hides, or relatively rare finds. This is because they, unless they are protected from microorganisms that cause decay, they tend not to last long. Extreme cold is one reliable way to keep artifacts relatively fresh for a few thousand years, but once thawed out, these materials experience degradation relatively slowly. So what does this mean? And they have to raise the clock. Understand? Raise the clock indicates that the archaeologists are under pressure. So I go with passage B. Interesting finds at an archaeological site. Organic materials such as animal scales and textiles are not discovered very often at archaeological sites. They have little protection against a dash, which means that they decay relatively quickly. So again, I go to the first passage. So see this. They protected from the microorganism that causes decay. So the answer is microorganisms. 
decay relatively quickly, but this is not always the case. If temperature or low enough, fragile artifacts can be preserved for thousands of years. A team of archaeologists have been working in the mountain in Opland in Norway to recover artifacts revealed by shrinking ice cover. In the past, there were trade routes through these mountains and Dash gathered there in summer months to avoid being attacked by Dash. So see this. Reindeer once congregated on these icy patches in later summer months to escape from biting insects. So what is gathered? Reindeer. So reindeer gathered there in summer months to avoid being attacked by insects on the lower ground. So I hope you are able to understand. So next is 23 and 24, 25, 26 or MCQs. So which two of the following statement does the writer make about discoveries of Barrett's stream? So I go with uh, B and C. Hunters went into the mountains even during periods of extreme cold. The number of artifacts from certain time periods are relatively low. So this is because... See the paragraph F. It turned out hunters keep regularly venturing into the mountains. And paragraph C... Number of artifacts from certain time period was relatively low. So these lines indicates that B and C. And that is from paragraph E. There are few or no signs of activity during other periods. And next is 25 and 26. So, two statements does the writer make about Viking age? What are the two statements that is made about Viking age? I go with A and C. Hunters at this time benefited from an increased demand for goods. So, this is from a G paragraph, fifth line. Growing Norwegian towns along with export markets created a booming demand for heights to fight off the cold and good for hunters. So, booming demand for goods is benefiting the hunters. And I go with option C. Viking did not rely on ships alone to transport goods. G paragraph, third line. We usually think of ships when we think of Scandinavian expansions. So plenty of goods traveled on overland routes. So that makes me the option C. I hope you are able to understand. Thank you for your patience. Bye.